Hi, everybody. I'm Laurie Voss, VP of Developer Relations at Llama Index. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the sub question query engine and how it can be rebuilt in workflows. Workflows are our new abstraction for, for uh, constructing complex agentic workflows. And one of the cool things about uh, being able to build workflows is that a lot of the built-ins in Llama Index can be re-implemented as these flexible, extensible versions of themselves. So today we're going to be walking through a notebook in which I've re-implemented our built-in sub-question query engine. Just to recap, what the sub-question query engine does is it takes a single complicated question and a set of tools uh, and it splits the complicated question into lots of smaller, simpler questions, and then uh, uses the tools to be able to answer that question. It then combines all of the smaller answers together into a single answer to the question. So let's look at how we do that. First, we bring in our dependencies. Uh, we bring in Llama Index Core, of course. We're going to be using OpenAI to do the LLM stuff, so we bring in OpenAI and its embeddings. Uh, Llama index readers file is necessary to power the PDF reading that we're going to do. And Llama index utils workflow is to power the visualization that I'm going to be showing in a little bit. The next step obviously is to bring in all those dependencies as imports. There's quite a lot of them. And then we go into uh, defining the workflow itself. Uh, as you'll have seen in other places where we talk about workflows, workflows are defined as a class uh, with a series of steps. Each step is defined by the step decorator. Uh, and in this case, we have three steps. Uh, our first step is by far the most complicated. It's called query and it accepts the context and a start event. This is how it is defined as being the first step in the workflow because it accepts a start event. Uh, it expects three parameters. It expects a query, it expects an LLM, and it expects a set of tools. Uh, it attaches those to the global context object so that other methods can use them. Once it's done with that, it creates a prompt in which it tells the LLM to take this complex question and break it down into sub-questions and to return that response as pure JSON. Once it's got the JSON response back, it turns it into an object. And for each of the objects, each of the sub-questions in the object generated, it fires off an event here. It fires off a query event with the question attached. In workflows, each, uh, every function is event driven. So the next thing that happens is the uh, second step sub question will get triggered for every single one of those events that we fire off a different instantiation of sub question will get triggered. You can see that it accepts the query event here. Each one of these instantiations of sub question does something very simple. It, it instantiates a react agent uh, gives the React agent all of those tools that we attest, attached to the global context object. It gives it the LLM that we also attach to the global context agent. And then it asks the question. It gets the response and it triggers an answer event. The answer event contains the question that it was asked plus the response that it got. You can see here, it's emitting an answer event in the type declarations for the function. Answer events go to this final step, which is called combine answers. As you can see, it also accepts a context event and it accepts an answer event. What we're doing here is we're using a built-in utility function called collect events. What this does is it waits for a specified set of events before it starts returning all of them. Until it's received all of the events that it needs, it returns none. So you can see here, uh, every time it runs and it returns none, it just exits the function. Here we're defining exactly uh, which events it should wait for. In this case, we've created an array that consists of answer events, and it's the same number of answer events as there are questions. In the event that it is accept that it uh, receives all of the answer events, it proceeds to the next line, 
where it turns the question and answer pairs into a string. And then it gives the LLM a prompt in which it says, answer the original question using these sub questions and answers. Once it gets that final answer, it emits a stop event. I said we'd be using our visualization. Here's us doing that. We're going to draw all possible flows of this sub question query engine to see what it looks like. You can see this here. Our start event goes to query. Our query generates query events. Query events trigger sub question. Sub question triggers answer events. Answer events trigger combine answers, which triggers a stop event. What you're not seeing in this visualization is that this query could could trigger lots and lots of query events, which would then in, then trigger lots of sub questions and lots of answer events, which get combined and combine answers. So now let's see this in action. I have collected a bunch of very long PDFs uh, about San Francisco's budget, seven of them. So let's download those. And now we actually uh, instantiate our workflow. Before we can instantiate our workflow, we have to do a little setup. First, we have to give our LLM our open AI key. And then we look at each of these PDFs and we create a query engine tool for each of them. So uh, we get the year of the PDF from the file name and we create an index uh, uh, from that file name. The way that we do that the first time is we use simple directory reader to load that particular file uh, and create a vector store index. Uh, we then persist that to disk. So if you've, run, if you've run this notebook more than once, this branch happens instead, and it just loads the existing vector index uh, to save us some time. Either way, once you've got your vector store index, uh, it creates a query engine, and we add to our array of uh, query engine tools a query engine tool object which contains tool metadata, which says, which gives the, uh, this specific tool a year. It's called, uh, gives it a name, uh, which is budget and year, and then describes what this tool does, which is give information about San, Francis San Francisco's budget in that year. With those query tools in hand, we're now ready to instantiate the sub question query engine. We give it a generous timeout of 120 seconds and we turn on verbose so that we can see what's happening. We also instantiate our LLM that we set up earlier. Now we call engine.run on, on our new sub-question query engine. We pass it the LLM and the tools and a query. How has the total amount of San Francisco's budget changed from 2016 to 2023? To answer this question, it needs to know the, what the budget was in each of those years and then be able to draw conclusions about the uh, changes as a whole. So you can see the sub questions getting split up here. It is split it up into eight very simple questions. <laughs> One for each of the years in question, uh, asking what the San total amount of San Francisco's budget was uh, in each of those years. Um, you can now see that the verbose uh, setting on the engine means that it uh, tells us which step is getting run. So it's now running the sub question step with each individual question. And you can see the react agent in pink here and blue uh, getting the answer to the questions. You can see it running sub question after sub question after sub question with a bunch of pink output every time. This is it running uh, eight separate react agents to answer each of those questions. Now you can see it running the combine answers uh, function. Mostly the combine answers function is not doing anything because these are all running inside the flow, uh, producing one answer event each. And we told the uh, combine answers to wait until it received all of the answer events. So seven times answer, combine answers runs uh, without, receiving, without receiving sufficient events. And so it doesn't do anything. On the final time, the eighth time, uh, it has all of the events that it needs, so it creates a final prompt. The final prompt says, here's the original question, here are all the sub-questions and their answers, and we get a final response. From 2016 to 2023, the total amount of San Francisco's budget has seen significant changes, blah, 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 blah. San Francisco's budget grew a lot. And that's the answer. 
uh, I hope this is uh, a useful look at how you can use uh, the power of workflows to create flexible uh, agentic applications. And I'll see you next time.